welcome back to my channel um you are such a gem for coming over and i am so glad that you are here with me this week um i hope that you have had a good day so far whatever time it is morning afternoon night evening um i hope that it is treating you well and that you've had a good time um i am miss chloe and this is my channel about cross stitch i am so glad that you are back and i am so glad that i get to share with you today a few different things um so first up, I would just like to say thank you to all 200 and I think it's 15 of you guys that have been hanging around for the last year. Um, I have I've missed posting on this channel while I did my new adventure over at Fortunate Flossies. Um, I've decided to come back because while it's nice over there, um, I do have some other bits and pieces that I'd like to do with you. I'm sure you guys noticed that I put a video up late last week as well and it was how to do a Lowry stand and I'd like to make shorts for you guys and little tutorials and things like that. Um, so I'm very excited about coming back and doing this new adventure with you and just sharing my stitching knowledge and my personal experience with all of you guys. Um, so that being said, I will jump into stitching now. Um, because you've already seen my main piece of haul, which of course was my Lowry stand. It's just off camera. There we go. I can see it there with this needle minder that my wonderful friend Amy gave me for Christmas. I don't remember who it's by, but it's really pretty. Um, so that one's sitting in the corner. So I thought I'd start with stitching today. I do have a little bit more haul. It is not as exciting as the stand. It's mainly floss, but it's a chunky packet. So it'll be worth seeing. <laughs> Okay, so first up today, I would like to show you my I'm Late from Bothy Threads. So if you've seen my latest updates or been on my Instagram recently, you would know that I had this in and I had some of this in, but all of this is all new this week. So I have, I've been working at putting these in. I found with the black that it's really easy if you can put down your foundation stitches first. So by that I mean of course the bottom leg of your stitches, so all one slant, and then come back and fill them in with the next piece of floss. Um, I'm finding it's helping with my tension and it's helping with my spacing. This kit of course is by Bothy Threads and it is called I Am Late. The Ada came with it, it is a 14 count Ada, it is hand dyed. And it is just these beautiful pastels. It makes me so happy. And then, whoop, cat hair. It is stitched three over one, which means that we put three, th three strands of thread over one square. And then of course it comes back to finish the cross. So this is where I'm up to. Um, this size here is a quarter of the piece. So I'm gonna focus on getting that bit done. And then I don't know whether I should move this way or this way. Um, so when I get that done, I will put a little poll up on my Instagram, which is at Miss Chloe SW, just like this channel is. Um, it's, I know it's not very original, but it's so you guys can all find me, right? Um, because otherwise I would get lost. People, people need to keep consistency because I get lost so easy. So I try to make it easy for everyone else. Um, but yeah, I will put up a little poll to see if I should do this bit or this bit. And I will also crop the pattern in that post so that you guys know what you're picking. Um, so it will be important for you to vote because <laughs> I am very bad at decisions. I don't know what to do. Um, so yeah, this one is from Bothy Threads. I'm really enjoying this one. These are really good kits if you have a lot going on. If you're traveling, if you've got tired eyes, or if you've got a newbie stitcher, I would recommend these. You can see that the Ada is quite clear on its marking, even with all the color. And being one color, it's very easy to stitch. The chart is huge, so it's easy to read, easy to mark, and all of the floss comes pre-cut. So I highly recommend Bothy Threads if you've got a beginning stitcher in your life. Um, on this one, we have our two needle minders. I have a lot of needle minders um, because I am a paper pattern person. I have tried using Pattern Keeper, but the little tablet I had died. It was not very happy. Um, I charge it all night and get like 10 minutes, which is not very conducive for stitching. Um, so I've, I'm still a paper pattern person. Um, maybe one day I'll, I'll upgrade and come into the 21st century, but it's not this day. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so this is our Lunar Moth. This is from the Black Needle Society, designed by the wonderful Katie Landis. Everyone take a drink. And this, this is my little stitching dragon. And he comes from Cassie's Needle Minders. Cassie is Aaron's partner, so she is also part of Autumn Lane Stitchery. And she did this for one of the Black Needle boxes. Next up, we have my Ravenclaw piece. I have picked this back up this week for the first time in months, and I have missed her. My little Roro here is gonna be finished real soon. As you can see, I've only sort of got the two pages left. Um, and I have left her face because I feel like I'm gonna really enjoy stitching that. Um, so I left her face, whereas with Sally, I started with his face. Um, if you're not familiar, this is Sally. Um, he was a lot of fun. I finished him maybe last month, early this month. I forget. Time is getting away from me. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm really enjoying this one. This is from DMX Stitch. This is stitched two over two. Let me hold those, those parked threads down. I don't usually park. This is not... I'm not okay with it. I've already forgotten what they are. Don't be like me, write down what you're parking. <laughs> um, so this is stitched two over two because the count is very, very small. It's nice and fine. Um, this is a 32 count even weave from Sew It All and it is one of their printed fabrics. So the back, it's a bit messy, but that's fine. Is just a plain white, as you can see, um, which is pretty nice, pretty nice. Um, I think this one's called Blue Clouds if I remember rightly, and it's just this really beautiful soft pastel. So at the moment, because I'm getting close to finishing Roro and I've already finished Sally, I am gonna need to look into what I'm gonna use to do Helga and what I'm gonna use to do Godric. So if you know of a 32 count even weave that has a nice pastel splash for the yellow and the red, hit a girl up because uh, I'm going to need them very soon. <laughs> I can't just do two. I have to do a whole set. So this piece is a little more complex than your normal stitching. It has not only, like, obviously the normal threads, um, but it also has blended threads where you take one of each colour and use them together. Um, and they are sort of in between all these other colours so that they come out really smooth with the gradients which is really cool. It made a really nice effect. And the back stitching goes from one strand to two strands to three strands to changing color. So there's a lot to focus on in this piece and it's been really good to learn everything with Roro and Sally. Um, I found them to be just excellent pieces to work on. They've been so much fun, so much fun. Um, a little bit of housekeeping here. We do have, again, a lot of needle minders and a lot of ribbons. In case any of you are wondering, this frame is the one that I usually use for my big pieces. Um, so they have a lot of extra fabric that needs rolling up. So I have worked out a ribbon system <laughs> um, where I can lie the fabric down and roll it up and get it tied off really tight so that it's not hanging off or anything because I do not possess any form of sewing skill and I have not made grime guards or as Ross calls them, giant scrunchies. If you've seen that episode of Stitched by Liz, you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, go watch Stitched by Liz. Um, <laughs> I have called them giant scrunchies ever since. So there's a lot, to, a lot to hold on here. And these ribbons are quite long because the piece I do, the fabric is actually taller than I am. And you'll see that piece in July. So never fear, it will turn up. It's just not here yet. Um, and I need the longer ribbons to hold everything in place for that one for two weeks. So this is Rora and this is where she's up to. So we've got needle minders from the Black Needle Society. We've got one from Ginger Stitch. Oh, two from Ginger Stitch. This one is from Flying Frog Stitchery. It's my little Simba. The Lion King is my favorite movie of all time. Um, so lots of Lion King stuff will happen with me everywhere. <laughs> I cannot get enough of it. And I do not remember where I bought these two from, um, but they did come from the same 
same seller. Um, I think they were actually slightly gifted to me, but I think they're really cute. And that's where she's at. So the next thing I've worked on is called False. It is from The Office. <laughs> um, and it is an outline of Dwight's head. Now I don't have it with me because it is my lunchtime project for at work. And if I bring it home, it will not go back. I'm really bad at remembering things. Like I'll leave it by the door and then six months later, I'll be like, oh yeah, I need to take this to work. Mm -hmm. um, so it's staying at work, but this is what it looks like at the moment. And you can see in the picture, I've got like the little, the little image of when it's gonna be done. This is a miniature kit from RP Minis that I actually picked up in a bookshop here, um, which is like the weirdest thing to me. Like they are selling full cross stitch kits and I didn't know at all. I walked in and it was it was sitting there. Um, a couple of years ago, I did Pusheen, uh, which I also got at the bookshop. So always check bookshops, guys. They have random stuff now. It's not just books, which there's nothing wrong with. I am a bibliophile. You can you can see some of my collection. Um, this bookshelf actually runs the whole length of my wall and it's full. So I'm gonna need to um, get another wall soon, I suppose. <laughs> Because I'm going to need more books. Can never have enough books. Okay. The last thing I'm going to show you that I have worked on is my Dark Queen. So this is the Dark Queen of the Earth. And it is by Autumn Lane Stitchery. And I'm currently working on part three. Ooh. Which is from sort of here down. Um, and I've got two colors left. So I'm working on 729 at the moment. And then there'll be one more color after that and it will be done for part three. It is currently up to part eight. I am a long way behind you guys. <laughs> um, so they've got like things coming out here and little branches and she's got a body and like the, the big halo of, of twisty vines and stuff. It's a very cool piece. Um, it is from Autumn Lane Stitchery. It is a stitch along that's currently happening. And I am so excited to catch up and watch it grow. So this is going to be my main focus piece for a little while. Um, because I love it. And working on it is so smooth. Aaron's colour theory is nuts. It's just so beautiful. Um, but she is stitched two over two. So again, that's two threads over two holes. Um, if there are any newbie stitches that have questions, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to talk to you. Um, and it is on a 32 count Opal Lugana called Nightshade. So it's very pretty. I think it's coming up there. We've got a good amount of sparkle on her. She is shiny, just like me. Um, living her best life. And actually when you get to see her in person, in between the stitches, you can see the little bits of sparkle come up in between the, the dots of color, which is really cool. And this one, of course, is also covered in needle minders because I'm currently working on a split page. So I've got two pages to cover this spacing and I also have my color key. Um, so I just stick them up and then I've been working on her upside down because she's at the awkward point in the frame where I don't want to move the frame again because I'm going to immediately be working sort of in this area next. Um, but it's too far down for me to, to hold up. So this is, this is where the stand I've just bought comes in handy because now I can just sort of leave it set up and I should be able to work on it upright. <laughs> um, it's going to feel weird because I've been working on it upside down for a few weeks now. Um, tell me, does anyone else do that? Do you turn your piece upside down or you, you, you just can't do it? Been talking to some people online that have seen that my posts are upside down when I film them and they they're telling me they couldn't do it so I'm interested to know what the take is are you an upside down stitcher that is crazy like me or are you a you know a, are you someone that has to have them the right way up um yeah so this is where she's at so as I said I've almost finished part three um there's two colors left so I should definitely get that done in the next week um, and when I come back to update you on her in two weeks, hopefully I will be part way through part four. That would be so nice to get a good chunk done and be like, look, look how pretty. 
Um, I am using her for a lot of my videos over on TikTok, which again is at Miss Chloe SW. Pretty easy to find me. I'm everywhere. Um, and that is where I am creating shorts and little reels and little bits of content that I will then cross post and bring over here. So each time I finish a color, I cut it out. Um, but also this frame is really sturdy, so it's easy to mount a phone on and I can actually film a little bit if you are interested in an up close version of how I stitch. Um, other than that, she's pretty easy going. So far there have been no blends, which is very nice. Thank you, Aaron. No blends. Yes. Yes. Good. <laughs> um, and I've really enjoyed working on her because she is just so smooth. And yeah, I've also been learning or teaching myself how to start and finish all my threads on the front of my work with this piece. So I think I started doing it up here in part two, which is like these wing bits, which are petals, I presume. Um, so I started it up there and I've been following it all the way down here. So I didn't do it in part one, but I've been doing it in these other parts and it's been really interesting because I'm not pulling through on the back. I'm only doing it on the front. Um, it took a little while to get used to, but I think I finally got the technique down and I'm really loving it. So the army of needle minders on here, which I am so sorry, I got rambly there. Um, that's what I was talking about. Uh, again, from my usual suppliers. So we've got the Black Needle Society and then Ginger Stitch AU. Uh, there is a collection of mops. One fell off when I picked this up because the magnet got stuck to my hole. That's okay. That's okay. So I'm going to show you my hole because there's a small chunk of it I can show you and then a little bit of it I'm going to tell you about because I'm excited. Um, okay, so first things first, I have an online needle store because here in Adelaide we don't really have a lot of places to shop for things, um, which is a bit, a bit sad, but you know, it is what it is. Um, we've got Spotlight, we've got Lincraft, but other than that, there's no real sort of specialty places to go. Um, so I do have my online store and that is JK's Cross Stitch Supplies. She is fantastic. She's very fast with her orders and she always makes sure they're packaged well. So I got a new Snag Navit Repair. So you can see the end of this needle is textured. Get it to focus. There we go. It's textured. So if you end up with any bits that are sticking up out of your work, you can literally just stab it through and it will pull down all those loose fibers for you. Very nice if you find something just before framing. It also works really well on clothes. Like I use it for snags in my jumpers and t-shirts all the time. I have two cats, so like snags are my life, but these things are amazingly handy. And then I got a new threader to try. I have heard good things about these. I was a little disappointed to find out they are not magnetic, but I am excited because that should make things easy when I'm tired. My old snag nabber is in this bag, please ignore it. But Janet also sent me this cute little star and it's got like mermaid scales on it. Um, and it is a needle minder. So she threw that into my order for me, which is really sweet. And it's just the perfect size. It's so cute, so cute. And then I got a bulk pack of needles, you guys. It's, it's crazy. It's something like a hundred needles. I use size 26. Um, and I keep running out at like the worst possible times. So I have ordered a hundred needles and that should keep me going for a while. Um, so this is where I need your help today. How do you keep needles? Because all the other ones I've had have come in those cute little like bone packets and you take them out and they've got the little piece of black fabric in them. How do you keep them? Should I be buying or making a needle book? Should I be getting a pin cushion that my cats cannot get to? Is there a little container that I should get? Please let me know uh, because I cannot be trusted. I cannot be trusted. These will get lost. Um, so yeah, any advice you have would be great. And then finally, for the haul I can show you. This is my floss order. 
and it's all just DMC. It's nothing special. It's nothing overly fun. It is two of each color of the Frogwarts pattern because we got a color release the other day over in the group. Y'all, it's getting real. It's about three months away, but I am still so excited and I cannot wait to go to Frogwarts. So if you're going, let me know, chat with me, ask me questions. If you're a newbie, I am here for you um, because this is my favorite time of year my absolute favorite time of year. I love getting to hang out with everyone on the video chats and play the crazy games. And you know, it's gonna sound really stupid, but I like being told to go to my room by Lara. <laughs> um, so I'm very excited. So I bought two skeins of each color off the patterns. And my plan is to pre-cut all the lengths of floss to the length that I use, which is roughly this long folded in half um, because that's that's my reach, my reach for when I stitch um, and I am a loop starter um, which means that you fold the piece in half and the end that is the semicircle you use that to pull through and secure your floss so you don't have to run it under anything to start it or hold down a tail it's so much easier um, so I'm going to cut all of these up and then I am going to pop them on this this is the floss card that my amazing friend Liz over at Stitched by Liz gave me. Um, it's got my house on it. It's a beautiful color. Um, and on the back, it's got a little project card so that I can put down all the information for my flosses. And it is by Haven Stitchery. So I'm very excited. And now that I have something dedicated for Frogwarts that has almost enough holes, I am going to be able to keep my flosses organized instead of having to pull out a whole bunch of these guys from my floss cart, um, which I think is just going to be a lot easier. And before anybody that's going panics, it is okay. You do not need two skeins of each color for this year. I have bought two skeins of each color as a nice starting point because I figure it will get me through this year and probably next year. So try not to worry too much. Um, it's, it's not, it's not as big as it sounds. I'm just crazy and buying all the things, um, because that's what I like to do. Um, if, if you are coming to Frogwarts, I can't wait to see you. Um, if this is the first you're hearing about it and it is something that you're interested in, um, inbox me and I will tell you all about it. And then if it is something that you are, you know, that you want to do next year, you can enroll, um, and you can also get the pattern for year one at the moment in the Black Needle Society bolt. Um, when you are there, make sure you have my code, which is Chloe5. Um, and you will be able to use that to get a little bit of a discount. So you can actually use that on anything that's in the vault um, if there is something that takes your fancy and that you like. Um, so yeah, that's 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 that. And then my last piece of haul is not here yet, um, but I have ordered the Greenhouse of Oddities Stitch Along from Lola Crow, and I am so excited to do that one. Um, I'm sure you guys saw the Haunted Library. So many people did it last year, and I got FOMO. So as soon as this one was announced, I was, I was all over it, you guys. I am so excited. Um, two of my friends, Amy and Liz, hi guys. Um, they are gonna be doing it too. So obviously Liz is stitched by Liz, and Amy is on Instagram as Amy in the Valley. Go check them out. Give them some love. Tell them I say hi. Um, do all the things. Um, so yeah, if you are doing that stitch along, please let me know. I would love to keep up with you too. <laughs> but until next time, stay safe, be happy, and go craft something beautiful. I hope you have a great day, guys. Bye.